Greetings, everyone. My name is Doug Grotheis. And my name is Ike Shepherdson. Welcome to our study of the knowledge of God in the world and the Word. What you're about to learn through these lectures is designed to help you to grow in confidence in your faith and in your ability to share about your faith with others. We think this project is significant because you'll learn how to communicate what you believe about God, about Christ and the Bible to others in a way that is rationally credible and winsome. So we really need to know that Christianity is true. We need to have good reasons in support of our beliefs about Christianity. It's one thing to simply have an opinion. Many people have opinions about religion and spirituality and so many things, but we want to have knowledge. That is, we want to have views that conform to reality and which are reasonable. That's right. You surely have opinions about what food you like, what your politics are. You have, in, our, in our culture, people often look at religion as if it's just merely an opinion. But of course, an opinion is not the same thing as truth. Right. If a statement is true, it means that the statement connects with reality or corresponds with reality. So if I say that I am 65 years old, that statement happens to be true, all appearances to the contrary. If I say I'm 46 years old, the statement is false because that's not what my age is. And some people think that when we talk about religion or spirituality, we're in a realm that's beyond facts, beyond truth. But the scripture claims to be true, that God has revealed truths about himself to us. So if we believe this is true, and this is such a significant truth, then we should have reasons to back up why we believe these things. This study is called The Knowledge of God in the World and the Word. And you may have never really thought about Christianity in terms of knowledge. Philosophers will, will describe knowledge as justified true belief. But have you ever thought about Christianity in terms of knowledge? Now, you, of course, know that 2 plus 2 equals 4, or that Leonardo da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa. But do you know that Christianity is true? Do you have justified true belief that Christianity is true? See, we know that knowing Jesus is, is of utmost importance. That we don't just know facts about Jesus. We know him personally. But that's not all of the knowledge that we have. Right. So it's very significant that we believe a certain number of things in order to have a relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord One, is that there is such a thing as objective truth and that it is knowable. So Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but, by, or but through me. And if someone thinks truth is relative and arbitrary, then that statement will mean very little to that person. So we need to affirm that Christianity claims to be true, that there are truths that are knowable, that there is a God who holds us accountable, and moreover, that we are beings who need forgiveness and grace. We need redemption. So we don't simply argue that someone needs to have an experience of Jesus. They do. But that we need to believe certain things about the world in order to know who Jesus is and then who are we in relationship to him in order to exercise saving faith. And once we come to know Jesus personally we see the importance of sharing that knowledge with others. See, followers of Jesus don't, don't just amass knowledge for ourselves. We share it with other people. Jesus commanded his followers, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This means that you are to share the knowledge of Jesus that you have with others. You show them that Christianity is true and why Jesus is somebody to whom they can reliably apprentice their lives. It's not just about knowing things, but it's about sharing that knowledge with other people. The discipline of apologetics, which we understand to be commending Christianity as objectively true and compellingly rational and pertinent to the whole of life, is what helps us to be wise and winsome and knowledgeable witnesses to the gospel. In fact, Jesus himself was an apologist. He defended what he believed using reasons, using evidence. He did so in a contextually sensitive way, understanding who he was talking to. And we have to realize that it's not only non-Christians that have questions about 
God, Jesus, the Bible. But Christians have many questions. And I've seen over the years many polls that have shown that people who identify as Christians sometimes have very unbiblical beliefs. So we need to develop a biblical worldview and then be able to defend that and explain that to skeptics and unbelievers and even help believers grow in their knowledge of God. That's right. Apologetics is the discipline of defending and commending the Christian faith as being true, rational, and pertinent to every area of life. Like Doug was saying, this is important for Christians who have questions, but it's important for skeptics who have questions too. You might meet people in your lives who are skeptics, but they're open to learning more about Christianity. Apologetics is here to help you to do that. Because there is so much unbelief and so much confusion in our society today, we really need to defend and commend Christianity as not just another lifestyle or another spiritual approach, but really as the truth about reality. And the way that we do this is what's called the classical method, where we give arguments for the existence of God, a personal infinite being who created the world and is transcendent over it, but also involved in it. And then we build on that to talk about the specific evidences for the uniqueness of Jesus, the reliability of the Bible, and things of that nature. So the, the classical approach to apologetics has two steps. We start by establishing the existence of God. We show somebody that God exists. And then the second step is to explain how Jesus is God. We explain who he is. The sources of his life in the Bible are reliable and that he rose from the dead like he claimed he would do. Those two steps are really helpful for that skeptical person to first come to know that God exists and that God has been revealed in Jesus Christ. And when we do apologetics, we have to figure out what someone already believes. So let's say someone is already a believer in God, but they're very confused about who Jesus is. So we could say, well, what do you think about God? They might say, well, God is a creator and he's a moral lawgiver. Well, they're pretty much on the right page there, apologetically. But then we start to talk about the specific claims of Jesus, that he claimed to be able to forgive sin, that he claimed to be God, uh, that he died on the cross to forgive us of our sins. So you start where people are. Now, on the other hand, if someone is a hardcore atheist and they think there is no God and believing in God is irrational, then, for example, we might start with some of the scientific evidence for God from fine-tuning and from the beginning of the universe. And if that person comes around and says, I have to admit that theism, a belief in God, is more rational than atheism, then we can say, well, that's not all we know about God. We know about God also from the scripture, from history. And then we can start talking about the person and work of Christ and what it means to be a Christian. In all these things, we use the Holy Spirit's guidance to share the right reason, the right piece of evidence, the right argument with the person who doesn't believe to help them to approach Jesus. I've been living out these principles that you're going to learn in this study for the last 15 years in youth ministry, young adult ministry, preaching, and in small groups. I've worked along skeptical friends, uh, alongside skeptical friends in the technology world as well, sharing with them the reasons that I believe in God, the reasons that I believe that Christianity is true and rational. Well, I'm a little bit older than Ike, and I've been doing apologetics and witnessing to the truth of Christ for almost 46 years now. And I have done this as a student. I've been involved with campus ministry. I've been a professor for many years and written a number of books and articles and so on. And uh, my favorite group to speak to, whether it's live or whether it's on a radio program or whatever it is, is a group with Christians and non-Christians. Because I like to challenge non-Christians with the evidence for the rationality of Christianity. And I love to help Christians build up their faith as well. So I like to tell people that I have fire in my bones for the gospel and the fact that I'm a little bit older than Ike doesn't mean that I'm lagging in zeal. So we are both very excited about this project we're working on together. We present all of these things in this series to strengthen you in your faith and to help you to start sharing your faith with others. The truth about Jesus isn't something that's private, that you keep to yourself. It's something that you can grow in 
that you can grow in confidence uh, in, in your faith in Jesus, but also something that you can share with other people who don't know him yet. Although Ike and I are both academics and we've written academic articles and go to conferences and so on, you needn't be an academic or any kind of an egghead to learn from this series because we are going to make this clear and we believe that you'll find it quite compelling in your development of being able to defend the faith. So the first part of this study, we'll look at some of the objections to apologetics. Some people think the whole idea is wrong. We just believe in Jesus and there's no evidence, there are no reasons that could be given. It's just a matter of blind faith. Well, we will challenge that very strongly. Then we're gonna look at arguments for the existence of God. For example, there's this great argument that you'll learn in this study called the Kalam cosmological argument. In this argument, you look at the nature of the world around us and the universe itself, and you notice first that everything that begins to exist has a cause, and the universe itself began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. Well, what kind of cause could make a universe? This is who we're talking about when we talk about God. We're gonna get into that argument and arguments like it to help you to show other people that God exists. And on that foundation, we'll deal with specific elements of the Christian worldview, such as the reliability of the Bible, the identity of Jesus, that he is far different than any other religious teacher or founder of religions. We will argue for his deity, for his death on the cross to atone for our sins, for the resurrection. And we will show that while there's a general case for theism, there's also a very strong particular case for Christian theism, that the God of the Bible is the God that we can know through the arguments of natural theology. You may have felt before that you wouldn't know what to do if somebody asked you for the reason that the hope, uh, for the hope that you have. How would I answer a skeptic's question? If somebody's doubting, how would I help them? Well, in this series, we're gonna talk about how to show people that Christianity is true but we're also going to teach you how to lean on the Holy Spirit as you do so. We're going to show you how apologetics relates to discipleship and to evangelism so that you don't just think about apologetics, you don't just learn a lot of good evidence, but you're also, you also will get a chance to learn how to apply that evidence in your own life. Well, we want to encourage you to take this series very seriously because if you do, the Lord can use this to make you a more compelling and competent witness to the truth. And you will not only be more effective in sharing your faith with others, but it will really encourage you in your inner life that Christianity is not just a set of ideas, it's not just a social practice, but there is a living God who has revealed himself in nature, in scripture, in Jesus Christ, who is working in your life to help bring other people to yourself. So we are very grateful to be able to be involved in this project.